Hello everyone, and welcome back once again to Minecraft from the Fog. Since the last part, you guys have had a lot of suggestions for things I should do with new and old discoveries, starting with this. If this ancient city is to become ours, it needs a name. And that name, by popular demand, shall be... Rilla. Rilla. Or Rilla? Rilla? Uh, it's it's going to take me a while to get the hang of that. Even though I did Google the pronunciation, there were a lot of arguments about such things. But, some of you guys have given me advice for how to go about safely dismantling multiple Shriekers. Now, I have no idea if this is going to work or not. In fact, I specifically haven't Googled it because I want to have some trepidation going into this. This place remains a place of beauty, wonder, and absolute terror. It's not quite as dangerous as when we first arrived, but remember, the Warden is still under this skulk somewhere. And one misplaced footstep could bring it back to us. I'll have to take this moment to once again remember to set my crouch to toggle. But remember, there was a place last time we were here that I was very reluctant to try and clear, because there were two Shriekers in very close proximity to each other. However, some of you have given me advice on a way to potentially use wool to dismantle them. Oh, wait, did you hear that? And I was crouching the whole time. One of you actually pointed this out in the comments for a previous video, either the last one or the one before that. It would seem that Herobrine's footsteps actually do trigger the skulk. So there is actual potential harm in this ghost trying to sneak up on me here. Right here is actually kind of my kryptonite when it comes to it not being able to hurt me. Uh, which means we've got to make this place safe as soon as possible. Now I believe this is them. And what some of you told me is that wool not only doesn't make a sound, but also occludes sound. That sound will not pass through it to reach the Shriekers. So, like Indiana Jones reaching for the idol. Uh, let's see if we can get this to work. One, two, three, four. You are now completely enclosed, unless the skulk below you counts. In which case, this is not going to work. Then again... If there's stuff around corners, that could potentially contaminate this experiment. So let's have a look. All looks good around here. We did remove the one that was up on that ledge in a couple episodes ago. Let's try it. Oh my good golly gee, it actually worked. Oh, thank you so much for that. All right. Let's uh, remove that, being careful not to hit the Shrieker itself. And there we go. Oh, that was tense. But now we can begin exploring more. Now, I do still have my night vision potions on me, but... I don't know, I feel like it takes away so much from the atmosphere of the place, you know? Um, where is it? Where is it? Ow! That was one. That was one, but where is the Shrieker? Up there somewhere? Ah, you were sneaky. Uh, and I don't really have a whole ton of wool. I'll have to grab all this. Yeah, like I said, even though we're on kind of the periphery of the map here, I want to make it so that in my own home, there's nowhere I can't roar and receive nothing in response. There we are. Now, let's take a moment to look around and see if there's any others. Not actually seeing a whole lot, really. There's two over there. We'll cover those in wool. And one over there. But other than that, I think this place is actually starting to be more safe than not. 
Uh, okay, we are actually rounding a corner into much more unexplored territory now. Uh, what am I getting into? I like to think at the ends of the chamber, when the world doesn't load in and we see daylight through it, that that's like almost some kind of cave mirage. Something that my character wishes they could see, but no, isn't truly there. Alright, let's seal you in. I don't even want to risk, like, placing one on you directly. You guys are here. Oh. Will it hurt if we go like that? Will that count? Because you're sharing a corner. It will actually work. There we go. Actually, I've just realized, if a diamond hoe has mending, but not silk touch, it actually won't be damaged at all by removing these things, so this is actually the ideal tool for this. And especially since it also has efficiency 4. Ooh, and look, there's even one temple right across from the other. One shrine, rather, but... We have a problem boy over here. Before we remove that, we'll just have a look like we usually do. Ow. I'm really lucky that didn't cause a problem. Look, I even get to collect the excess XP. This is going to be a great way to go about doing this. Efficiency 5, Fortune 3, Unbreaking 3. So that'll be a good one for when we want to build our Skulk Coast. And for a certain project I have planned for the people of New Dunwich, suggested by you guys. A whole bunch of Echo Shards here. Yeah, I'm just trying to make my way back to the front so that I can bank all my stuff in a chest. But man, there is so much crazy loot down here. Ooh, I am so lucky. Goodbye. Both of you get out of here. Uh, this upper part is pretty unexplored as well. Hello. Ah, well, that's the sign that we have reached the edges of Relais. Although, there's still plenty more clearing to be done. I think we're starting to get pretty close to... Oh, wow, that is just beautiful. <laughs> Immediately reminded that it's not real, but utterly beautiful. Yeah, I'm starting to see fewer and fewer of these things. Having to travel farther and farther to find them, which means... We're getting closer and closer to this being our new vacation home. Uh, see, it's these hidden guys right behind walls that cause me problems. Yeah, wow, this is actually... this corner is quite a corner. There's actually a lot more here. Ah, oh, I have my work cut out for me. Ooh. It's another one of these things. Like a central area, one of these archway things. I hadn't even noticed it on approach because we were coming up to it from the side. And even more behind it. It just never ends. Okay, these things do not block it. There may have actually been no way to deal with that one. That's two. Unless there's a timer when they're reset that doesn't require me to leave. That's actually a pretty important distinction. I'm on which which one? Where 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 where? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Is it affecting the one down there? It shouldn't be. That one should be unaffected. So, okay, I think I think I have to go now. I can't risk I, I can't risk a fourth one. I'm going to die if the warden shows up. I, I, it's so stupid if they can spawn inside, like, a pocket inside these things. But I don't think there's any more I can do without it being a huge risk here. 
All right, I'm just going to get going. Hmm. Just making a brief pit stop back home to loot my lootables, and I hadn't noticed this one before. Actually, the last time I was here was when I was placing all these spreaders. Maybe a direct response to my ambitions for a skulk coast? There's Liberty and Percy having a bath with justice. Now, some of you also told me that uh, if we use a name tag on a prisoner, they will not actually despawn. Not only that, but we can also allow them to shoot enough times that they'll actually break their crossbow. Maybe later. I don't feel like sticking around for that. Can we name tag you while you're in a boat? No? Oh, right. We need to place this on an anvil first. Place that anvil right here. We now have our name tag labeled simply Prisoner. And I'm also going to take this opportunity to take our latest diamond axe and enchant it with Smite 4. And now, this thing should pack quite a punch when it comes to dealing with any hostiles we may need to deal with, including unruly prisoners. All right, bucko. We name you, there we go. And come on. Don't resist. There you are. Yeah, we're gonna have to lose that boat, but whatever. All oh, right, I almost forgot to take away your soul torch. You know what I think my favorite part about this is? He has to stay down there listening to the giggles of the fairies he once trapped himself. That, I think, is a perfectly fitting punishment. Do we already have one of these? We do. Uh, so much 13. And I found even more in the ancient city. I just haven't taken any more with me. Also, uh, something that I thought of while I was down there. I've had Darwin above the door, but what am I even thinking with that? When there's a perfectly good space beside me on the throne. After all, what better place for Darwin than on the bone throne? Ah, uh, here come they. Tell you what, how would you guys like to be the first additions to the Skulk Coast? Right over here. Come on, don't lose track of me. There we go. Dive down. Did you see that? Did you guys see that? I've never seen Herobrine just appear directly in front of me before. Just blatantly. There you go. Ah, uh, but you won't be taken in. Hmm, maybe you have to die close enough? Maybe it's not just about proximity of the XP? Right here, Mr. Skeleton, come on. Yep, that's a good spot. There we go. And so it begins. Hmm. You don't want to seem to come towards the campfire. Hang on, wait, let's test this. Yeah, you will approach, but only once that's gone. I'm taking so many hits right now. But I need you to get close, come on. Right, as close as you'll come? That's alright. Okay, so a use for campfires has been discovered. Oh, that actually reminds me of something else you guys told me to try. Oh, uh, but hang on. We need to test one more time if you guys will become one with the Skulk. Nice and close to me, please. There we go. You react, but nothing happens. I don't understand why certain mobs don't actually seem to affect it. Now, I've known this for a couple episodes now, but I haven't had an opportunity to remark on it. You guys have told me that these guys appear when you don't sleep for three days. Almost sleep deprivation demons. 
Come on. Ah, but you will ignite. We do finally have the means to craft a recovery compass, which points the way to our previous death. Which, of course, in this case, will probably be down in the ancient city, I want to say? Well, let's put this stuff away and know that we may have to use it at some point, though hoping that we never do. Just get rid of all, all of these excess bows that have been taking up inventory space throughout the entire game. I do not require them. And we'll head off towards the next objective. Yeah, they're definitely spawning here. Yeah, uh, oh, that is so stupid. Why can they spawn on grass blocks? That's going to mean there's going to be no way to prevent them from spawning in here. We just have to kill them when they show up. Okay, I see why we've been getting the same Herobrine. This is the button to randomize the skins. Let me know what you think, though, because there's some of them that I don't particularly care for. And while I do like having it be random, there is something to be said for the classic, don't you think? Yeah, that's right. I got the power of blue mushrooms. And I'm gonna have a lot more blue power momentarily. Now last time, I tried using soul fire to ward off the piglins. However, that didn't really seem to work, but I'm willing to give it another shot. Uh, because the wiki says that it is indeed true, so might as well. Right, let's try this. Boom, boom, boom. No, hang on. I have to... Okay, thank you for hanging on. Uh, boop, boop, boop. Yeah, you don't seem to care about this when you're aggroed. Which is very annoying. That's like, you know, when it's needed. Alright, get back that way. I'm using the pick on purpose, because I wanted to push you into the lava, but it didn't work out. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite skeptical. I'm quite skeptical of the claims about this, even though the wiki says it's true. And now we return to the only good piglins I know. At the village of... Now, here's the thing. I asked for names. You guys said that there is actually precedent in Lovecraft lore, although not written by Lovecraft himself, for a snowy city by the name of Kingsport. But sitting atop this mountain, it's... Got you. Come on, you're interrupting my thing. I feel like I'm getting interrupted constantly in this playthrough right now. But yeah, as I was saying, the most upvoted suggestion was Kingsport after a town which inspired a snowy town in Lovecraftian lore. This place ain't no port. However, its spot perched atop a mountain is quite kingly. So I'm thinking this. How about King's Peak? The town of King's Peak, perched atop a snowy village, possibly touched by Herobrine and able to see all around. I think this could be a cool spot. However, I am not here for that. I am here because some of you guys told me that there's a chance that Herobrine's igloo holds additional secrets. So we need to make our way across yonder mountain and see if we can't find it again. It's that polar bear again. I hope they're not hostile. Although it's certainly staring me down, it doesn't appear to be coming after me, so let's keep it that way. Something tells me that's something I'm not interested in fighting right now. Where is this igloo? Ah, oh, just like all the ghost stories, when you try and return, you can't find it. Okay. And we're good. Now what you guys had told me is that I should try searching beneath the carpet on the floor. Nothing. Okay. Well, it was worth the shot. Okay, no, it wasn't. It was actually just a trap. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Actually, I kind of wonder if I were to go like... Oh, this is so stupid. If I were to go like this... 
Okay, that would stop me from falling through. Oh, wow. I had said before that the portal at Innsmouth was acting as a lighthouse, but this one... The one at King's Peak? Well, because of its position, it really does act as a beacon in the morning light. Why don't we do our first bit of commerce with the people of New Dunwich? Oh, you're not... Your stuff is reset. You will only take rabbits or sell rabbit stew. Why did that happen? I thought your thing had to be removed in order for you to be reset. Okay, that doesn't make any sense. One other thing you had said is that if I were to use a water bottle on a dirt block... Nope, not that. Maybe it has to be actual dirt and not just grass. Place that down, and... Ah, we get... I think you said mud. Mud, which would give us additional crafting recipes. Now, what is it like to actually walk on this? I do wonder what this does. Hmm. It does seem to be a little bit different. It behaves weirdly when I walk over it. Alright, we'll learn more about that a little bit later. But there is actually one thing that caught a lot of people's attention in the previous part. And I can't let this go. I wanted to see myself, so of course we're going to figure this out. So you right here. And then we go... This. Oh yeah. This is staying. I don't know what form it's going to stay in. I'm going to remove this one at some point. But I really love the idea of enslaving Herobrine itself, or at least one form of it, and making it into my court jester unwillingly. Oh, this is so great. Look, you've even got a big ol' smile on your face. Alright, this way, friends. Boop. 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 Skulk Coast coming along nicely. Oh, look at you. Although, I'm, I don't understand why spiders don't work for it. Oh, they do actually. Huh, that's weird. They weren't working all the other times I tried it. Why? Oh, this is such a good idea. Gonna take forever. I will definitely have to supplement from my own stocks. But this is looking pretty good. Oh, now some of you had said that I can get music discs to potentially spawn by getting skeletons to kill creepers. Now, I had dismissed that as one in a million chance it's never going to happen. However, I do wonder if we can't get a creeper to get in a boat. That's kind of becoming my new meta strat. See, how come it sometimes just doesn't do anything? I don't understand that. All right, but the gang's all here. This is exactly what I want. <laughs> Actually, you know what we haven't really tried yet? Ah, that might have done something. Hang on. Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, you're a little sluggish on the reactions, but I, I was thinking the only thing I haven't tried besides campfires is soul torches. So if I place this here, right, or, well, this will be better off with uh, somebody with a sword. Didn't you have melee? Okay, right. We'll place this right here. You have a crossbow, but you're down there. It will not stop you from attacking me. However, as soon as I'm out, as I'm out of sight, you will get scared and run off. You don't like touching it, uh, this has limited usefulness, but perhaps if we get enough of these things, we can... Oh god, this is so annoying. Perhaps if we get enough of these things, we can create sort of a zone around New Dunwich? I think that's what we have to do. Anywhere that our construction touches, we just need to have lots and lots of soul torches to keep them from getting close in the first place. Uh, it's annoying how inconsistently that works, but this should be more than doable. Uh, while we're here, we haven't checked up on nether sheep in a while. 
We just gotta maneuver around, I guess, until we hear that distinctive ba. Yeah, I've looked all around, and I can't seem to hear nether sheep anywhere. I guess they're just off living their best life. Not that we'd be able to spot them from a distance. Oh man, that's actually kind of creepy. Knowing that nether sheep is just out there somewhere. A being from my own dimension feared by the inhabitants of this one. And now out of the control of even myself. Yeah, we're definitely going to start placing these everywhere. Uh, most importantly, around New Dunwich. Remember, we want to put these wherever possible, not just where we want to be safe immediately, but where we want to stop them from approaching at all. So essentially what we need is a piglin circle. I believe I read somewhere that the radius of their fear is like seven blocks or something like that. So if we can just do a similar thing for the, uh, what do you call it, for the blue mushrooms, then we'll be golden. I'm also going to take this opportunity to begin enclosing this rail system. Because I, I'm just so fed up of dealing with all these guys. So let's start building this. We have so much extra nether rack from all the work we've done on New Dunwich. We also have to remember, though, that this needs to be three tall. There we go. And the reason we need it to be three tall is because I want this whole thing to be horse accessible. If we're going to start expanding out from King's Peak and traveling over land, we're going to need patience for that. Oh man, the name just makes it so easy. We could even carve this bit out of the middle here so that we can see right through. Their crossbows are slow enough that they won't be able to shoot us through it, but... What's the point of a train ride without the view, right? Come on. Fight, please. Fight. It's a constant sort of battle between not being able to stop you from spawning and not being able to, uh, not being able to fully scare you away. Well, we have a winner. And I play winner. That's just the rules. You know, it does pose an interesting lore question. Just what is it that makes them so afraid of ignited soul sand? Alright, let's place a few of these soul torches around our entrance area. And at long last, uh, this should also presumably keep them from spawning too close to them, right? And at long last, the Dunwich branch of the Trans-Nether Rail System is fully enclosed, and it should be fully horse accessible. Although, eh, there is always the threat of things from above, but I guess we'll cross that bridge when we don't come to it. Now look, for the sake of visuals, I've mostly refrained from using name tags on the pets throughout this playthrough. Just because I don't think it looks as good having the name tag directly above them, you know, less immersive. However, if we are going to be taking patients to all kinds of foreign lands, maybe leaving them there for long periods at a time, I feel like it's just safe to do this. There we go. Well, <laughs> you want to see a horrifying new dimension? Let's ride, patients! Ah, oh, this horse must hate me so much. Especially since he's almost drowned in snow twice. How am I going to get you down there? Maybe you can fit through here. Ow, 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 oof, ouch, owie. Okay, no, we, we need to, we need to raise this a little bit. We need to literally raise the roof to make room for patience. Whoops. We cannot raise the roof to make room for patience. Okay, drop the floor to make room for patience. Drop the floor. Ow. It's, 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 it's just like the Batcave, you know? You have to have the one small entrance for Batman and Robin to slide down, and you have to have, well, the giant one for the Batmobile to drive through. 
Uh, this is so irritating. I can't see past your neck. Never mind the outrageous physical feat of trying to do landscaping work from horseback. It's just how the posh elite do it. Now, some of you had said that it is possible to get a horse into the nether. I just have to get off. <laughs> I hope you're there waiting for me on the other side, Patience. There you are. All right, let's, come on. Let me, let me get on, you. Why can't I get on? Come on, let me, oh, I'm crouched. I can never tell with these stupid pants. Okay, and through we, oh right, it needs to be too wide. Dang it! All right, you go back through. I'll pick you up when I'm done widening this thing. Luckily, most of it is already wide enough. It's just these last couple of pieces that need to be fixed. There we are. Uh, it's actually a decent amount. Okay, now see, this is what's supposed to be prevented. You're spawning in here. So clearly we need another one of these things right here. Yeah, oh wow, you're terrified. You're, this is actually a piglin trap. A nightmare of your own fault. There we go, you just needed a little bit of fear to spur you on. That's kind of my philosophy for life. Yeah, I, I guess you guys are fine, so long as I have gold and you won't attack the villagers, which was the main concern. You, however, can climb over right there, so that's going to be something that's going to have to be enclosed as well later on. At least some fences. Oh no, don't go for the villagers. Don't try to escape either, I want your hand. Alright, now patients can ride. Mostly. Yeah, <laughs> you have no idea how difficult it is to make this train tunnel horse accessible. But that's not the only improvement I made. You have your door right here. Uh, and we should have also made the stairs horse accessible. Once again, thunking my head on the way down. Uh, there's still more of these things. All right, now we can go and do this. Great. And you guys should all stay away because there is a mushroom right here, although we'll need to go get more. You know, let's clear these up. Ooh, I can actually use patience as a ladder. Ah, oh, the things you learn. And for you, patience, I have crafted a little hitching post right here. I said right here. Right here. It won't let me do it. Okay, temporary measure. Let's build that so that you can get inside. Come on. There we are. And maybe we can build you a regular thing to hitch you to, a regular fence. Now, if we just put this right over here, will that work now? Yes, okay, so we can't use the nether fences for some reason. Well, congratulations on being the first of your kind in the nether. I've expanded the Soul Torch range so that things should get closer less often since we do now have a horse ramp out there. That's annoying. But we gotta figure out how to get you that last bit of the way through. See, the challenge here is that things need to be horse accessible, but not villager accessible. You guys have told me that this is actually a bar to jump, but like, it's just due to like RNG that patients can't jump. Ah, but you can actually run up and over that. All right, you are able to hop a little bit of a gap. Unlike my head. Oh, look at this image. Riding my armored steed across a bridge through the nether. Hang on, wait, let's see that again in cinematic view. Truly epic. Truly epic indeed. All right, where you go? <laughs> all these villagers watch a horse just get ejected from the portal. They keep spawning all these piglins, these zombie pig people. <laughs> They're all just like, isn't that the horse from before? Isn't that the horse from horsing around? For some reason, I can't seem to hitch you to these either. Despite the fact that I was able to do it before. Wait. 
Is it because I was crouching? I can never tell if I'm crouching anymore. Also, it doesn't help that, like, not only is there very little visual difference and now very little speed difference, there's also the fact that I'm pretty sure it puts me into a crouching mode when I get off of you. Morning has come, and I would like to go investigate that big cave between King's Peak and Arkham. So let's go. Yep, right here is where we are. Now, I'm also in the need of iron. Uh, we are actually starting to run kind of low on that, and we do need it, if nothing else, to replenish our anvils. However, the main reason I'm here is because I'm looking for more mob spawners so that I can do like you guys said and create my first mob farm. Now, I'm going to need some advice on that, probably, because I have never done this before. Let's just make some fences to hitch you up on. And we'll see how deep down there we can get you. Right here at the crossroads looks a good spot. And hopefully you'll be safe. I really hope you'll be safe. Ooh, an Enderman. Now, I'm actually going to have to start hunting these things. And the reason for that is because, well, if we're going to find an End Fortress, or whatever these things are called... We're going to need to start slaughtering these guys for their eyes. Alright, we should be well equipped for this fight. We've got good diamond armor. Smite four on our diamond axe. Good first hit. Yep, come on. Come at me, bro. I do like how their sounds can actually misdirect you. And continue for a time after death. You know, the setting sun is always creepy, but there's something so much more sinister about it. When you can see the light levels depleting through the one opening in the cave you're about to enter. Oh look, it left behind a grass block. Hmm. This is all hidden away. But it doesn't seem like this cave actually goes all that deep, at least not in a way that I can access. Yeah, this is mostly all embedded in the mountain. It doesn't really go anywhere. Maybe instead of this, we'll spend more of the day just kind of traversing the landscape and seeing what this biome has to offer. Yeah, I've spent all day looking around in these caves and only been able to come up somehow higher than where I started, which is sort of the opposite of what you want to do in caving. So I'm going to take this back. And what do you say we do some more exploring, Patience? I'm thinking more in the direction of the igloo. Thought I was going to go plunging down into the abyss right there. Oh, look at how cool that looks. The moon rising directly over King's Peak. It's almost like, at the end of the day, the jewel is placed into its crown only to be replaced by another in the morning. Two different places during the day and at night, just like everywhere else in this world. What was that? Do you see that light over there? Over by that mob? Oh, you're a... Are you a villager or a zombie? No, you're a villager. What were you doing? Uh, maybe I mis-saw whatever that was? Misunderstood what I was seeing? It sure looked like you were doing some shenanigans. Oh, look at that lava fall. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo! Yeah, let's climb down here and just kind of follow this river for a while. Yeah, you're taking a little bit of fall damage. I, I should have brought some wheat. You guys said that we can actually heal horses directly using wheat. So keeping a stock of that on us when traveling would certainly be very useful. But we reach the ice below. And nothing like a moonlit canyon run to brighten our morning. Oh, I love how the terrain around us actually reflects in the sheet of ice. Uh, it's not just shaders. GLSL does a million simple little things that you'd never think this game would be capable of to make it so gorgeous. 
But this is the direction we came last time. There's the igloo. Which means we've got to go the other way. Actually, is it maybe worth exploring this cave itself? I mean, yeah, probably. This one probably goes a lot deeper. <laughs> maybe there was something in the basement of that igloo after all. Oh, that is so funny. Maybe at some point we'll build a ladder if we decide to make it a permanent base. But for now, I leave you here to be patient once more. Okay, so we confirm that it is due to crouching? Uh, yes, game, Windows, thank you for tabbing me out. Why did you do that? This is actually quite a huge ravine. But I do love it when they come pre-equipped with a lava fall. I mean, a waterfall. A lava fall would be bad for me, but we can make our own if need be. Now, what do we see down there? Uh, we've got iron. But the most important thing is that it is deep. Look, it even blocked its own path so that the water could continue flowing. Believe it or not, in a fight between water and lava, water wins in this game. Yeah, this is quite a cool place. Ooh, there's even one of those geode things up there. Uh, in order to help us see a little better, why don't we use one of these night vision potions? Yeah, it kind of ruins the mood a little bit, but it's very, very useful for getting my bearings. Yeah, this does go quite deep, and it does go in quite a few directions. But we can recognize our way out. Ooh, look, we can actually see all the way to the top. This one's got natural light flowing this deep. But as I was going to say, we can recognize where we need to go by the Twin Waterfalls. And so we shall dub this Twin Waterfall Cave. Not like I've been naming any of the other systems, but hey, why not start now? Suspiciously, though, I'm not seeing any mobs. Another geode right over here. Uh, I just have such an instinct to preserve these, even though, like, you know, you don't really need to. But I also don't really need any more amethyst. Oh, of course. Of course there's more deep dark. Well, I'll tell you what. This one's kind of far removed from anything we care about. Maybe we can use this as a source of skulk for our various skulking projects. Actually, since there are no shriekers to be seen about, given the proximity to the other systems, it's entirely possible that we've been through here before. I can't remember. I might have actually seen this exact area. During all that time, I was lost down there before discovering Arkham. Hello, is there combats going on over there? Oh, it's another one of yous! Alright, we probably won't be able to test the theory immediately. Well, unless a skeleton spawns. <laughs> okay, thank you! Uh, get right here. Boom. No, 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 no. Okay, uh, now we need to get on the other side of that. This position is not advantageous. Come on. Nope, come on, come on, come on. There we go. We just got to keep this going. We can make it happen. We can do it. Unless that happens. Okay. Well... I have to say, I hadn't planned for this possibility. I'd be lying if I said it wasn't somewhat cute. <laughs> oh, the fan art practically draws itself. Uh, but you will still become hostile if I get close, right? Oh, and I can't use the... I can't use the shield while there's other right clickables. Hang on. Maybe I can still make this work? No, you'll actually shoot right around him. That is so annoying. Out or through him, as the case may be. Well, I'll tell you what, now that you're trapped there, uh, maybe what we need is actually some ship-to-ship -ship combat. Maybe that's something we could achieve. 
Give me a moment. Oh, I suffer so for this. All right, you right there. Come on. Nope, I'm talking to you. Yes, right here, this way. Let's try and get you fairly level for the best results. Come on. Oh, now you can't pathfind? There you are. Okay. Are you... You'll still try and explode. Ugh. But it seems like an arrow fired at you would just hit the boat. There we go. We can break at from a distance. Come on. Ah, uh, you're shooting around it. You made friends? Ah, uh, all right. Well, uh, maybe we can try again then. Oh, we, I think you hit the creeper again. Oh, come on. One more, one more. No! Oh, my God. This is so stupid. You hit it like three times. Okay. We have two creepers over there. What has to happen is we need a creeper in a boat and we need a skeleton in a boat, but they can't be the same boat. So let's eliminate one of you right off the bat. Maybe damage you off the bat. Get you to a spot of decently level ground. Boat, and you go. Now we wait for a skeleton. Ah, uh, look at that. They're all gathering around trying to figure out how to get their friend out of the boat. Oh, but it doesn't work. All right, come on. I'm about to start losing night vision, and that's all the night vision potions I have. So we're going to be back to navigating by torchlight. Oh, it's just going to make this so much harder. Huh. Okay. Yeah, you didn't want me to go too long without a reminder of your existence, did you? And the zombies are back. Yeah, actually, come to think of it, I don't think I've seen Herobrine at all in this session. Uh, this is session two of this uh, episode. And I don't think I've seen him even once. Which is... Highly unusual, to say the least. Ah, here we go. We have a mob spawner. Now, we are not going to be destroying this one. Uh, we are simply going to make a note of its location. And we find another music disc this way, because this game absolutely enjoys taunting me with ridiculous timing when it comes to these things. Which means I guess the romantic date between the zombie and the creeper is just going to have to persist for a while. At least until I can come back here and learn how to build a proper mob farm. Oh, look. One of them came with a chicken. Uh, I wish I had a boat for you. Ooh, I do. I do have a boat for you. Hang on, you can be this place's mascot. There we go! You even moved it a little bit at first. Can I get in with you? Oh, I can! All right, right here. You live right here now. Ow, jerk. All right, you two lovebirds. I'm under the assumption that... Oh, look, they're even hugging. I'm under the assumption that mobs and boats will stay forever, so I'm just going to leave you and probably resume my boat-related research back at home. But for now, patience has been patient enough for one couple of days, and I think we're going to head back. I am so sorry, Patience, but then again, it is your name for a reason. We'll just leave this post here, since we will be using it later. Now the thing is, I need to identify... Oh, wait, no, I don't need to identify where this is. I forgot, this is the cave directly under the igloo. All right. It was trying to show me the way all along. I've kind of neglected New Dunwich for a little while. Smack, smack, smack. Uh, so I'm going to do a little bit of an upgrade to this place. 
This simply won't do. Come on, go away. Yep, there, that's right. First actual rail trip in the new and expanded Transnether rail system. And this is a pretty cozy ride. It's a little slower than other branches because there's less powered rails. But I'd say it's a lot more convenient than previous editions. I actually want you in here. I don't think you'll stay. Oh, I should actually get some name tags for zombie piglins so that other piglins won't want to come in here. Yeah, yeah, we should actually totally name tag a bunch of you and just keep you as permanent residents. Yeah, it seems like nothing stops you from spawning here. I can only stop you from getting too close. Oh my, oh, wow, what? What is causing this? It's a pig apocalypse. Okay, well, I'm glad you don't attack anybody else. We can retreat to the safety of this. Oh, I don't think I had too many arrows, no. All right, let's injure each of you as much as possible. Good thing we have smite. Just get ready to, yeah, they're definitely maybe jumping in from over there. Maybe they followed me back? Oh, that's it for my arrows. All right. To battle! Yep. Gonna have to slaughter the small ones, too. Oh, how I wish, wish the butcher was taking your meat. I have to think this would have been an unwinnable fight at one point in time. You guys clearly aren't scared of the zombified piglins, either. There we go. That's most he is. Look, there's the one Junior in the back. I have a feeling Junior's responsible for this in some way. Maybe some mischief resulted in some unforeseen consequences. Yeah, you guys are literally spawning behind me. Maybe it's because I wanted to use this area for construction and the low light levels caused you to be able to spawn? I mean, I'm only saying that because I removed the one that was over here, and I've never seen it be this bad. Now, you guys, you're afraid of the of the rotted figure over here, right? Right? I don't have a lead on me to confirm. You don't seem to like him very much. Yeah, okay. Well, let's just start building and worry about lighting afterwards. You know, I'm glad the villagers seem to have a better relationship with the piglins than I do. They only like me when I display my wealth. I really do wonder what the arrangement is here, but I think the real answer is basically that you guys can get up here if you want. Oh, you're on the warpath. Oh, you're using this opportunity to go up and over to fight. Oh, and ejected. Yep. Oh, and tossed straight to your friends. That was brutal. Ah, oh. things are not well in the nether at all. Ah, what are you looking at? And you broke my golden helmet, which means the others are going to start fighting me if they hadn't been violently ejected. So I guess everything worked out in the end? Oh, I just realized these villagers are really stupid. I should just increase the size of this wall so they don't run up and over. All right, we are closed, under construction. Let's do the floors of this thing. Yep, this is why we have to close for construction. I'm just stopping back home quickly for some materials, but I figure on a clear, starry night like this, now's a great time to have a look at how our Skulk Coast is coming along. Been slaughtering quite a few mobs, replaced it with quite a few of my own blocks. <laughs> oh, the giggle of the allays practically audible as you see them dancing about within. But if you squint, it does almost appear to be as a ship floating in the night sky. The crown jewel of King's Peak, now sitting atop the lighthouse. 
Uh, the moon itself I've almost come to see as a symbol of my power, depending on where it is. Which might be a personality disorder, but I don't really care too much about that. All I care about is vanity projects, and ours are coming along swimmingly. Oh, uh, speaking of personality disorders, how are things going for you? Still in here? Great. And we can't even see your name tag from behind the bars, so it doesn't even break immersion. Isn't that good news? All right, well, I'll leave you to think for another few weeks. While we're here, uh, perhaps I should give this pick Silk Touch. Uh, there's probably some major disadvantages to putting that on our main pick, uh, but we can use that to actually grab that nether soil for the first time and use it for some overworldly planting. Okay, why are you still able to do stuff like this? Apparently we'll have to put some mushrooms down in here as well. See, I had originally built this one block wide specifically to prevent exactly this from happening. But then it had to be big because we got a horse in the mix and... Well, you know, all kinds of crazy things tend to happen when you put a horse in the mix. Actually, how cool would it be if we just made this a lamppost? Make this place a little bit more lively instead of just... You know, a completely utilitarian construction project. Now, some of you said that in order to set this as their home, I need to get a bell which can't be crafted. So I will kind of have to at some point bite the bullet and buy one uh, from the villagers in... I, I think there's one in Arkham who will sell me one. Ah, uh, but here he is, the man of the hour. Just kind of... Checking out different people's houses and jumping on the beds, I guess. Alright, now he's off to work. Yes, off to work in the sacred temple of the unholy faith of the people of New Dunwich. Uh, if I had an unholy altar, of course it made sense that they had to have one. You just can't live here without having a few screws loose, and of course it'll bring you to some wacky beliefs. But then again, how wacky are they really, given their location? I told you that Dunwich would be reborn. They say that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, and... Well, while they're certainly stronger than the people of Dunwich, I wouldn't say it's necessarily for the better. But where's the fun if you're not doing wildly impractical, but insanely entertaining practices? I don't think there's any human sacrifice involved. Their population of four people isn't currently enough for that. Uh, but maybe in the future. I actually do kind of like having these little piglins just around. I like the idea of natives living here. It's just that, man, they do not want to have an easy time of it. The zombie piglins are actually good neighbors, as are the juniors. It's the adults that are causing problems. If we go out the back door and try to harvest ourselves some of this nether soil. Ah, as expected, and as hoped for, these can be harvested with their soil still intact, meaning we can use all of this for growth, either for planting blue mushrooms inside the walls of our city, or for planting stuff back home. And we see that it's called Crimson Nilium. Our first time accessing this block that's been everywhere for the entire game. The progression in this can be so weird sometimes. Oh, wait. Also, we can use it to get whole glowstone, yes! So, if we just come to the villagers' houses, place this right here and this right here, that's on both ends, providing two safe havens should any hoglins get over the walls. Ah, oh, that was truly a Pumbaa battle for the ages. A battle of Alexandria. But, it seems things are safer now. We've got light sources everywhere. All kinds of things to scare off any nasties. And I think I'll be placing just a few more for safety. It's almost like these soul torches are like religious charms meant to ward off evil. Sorry, Junior. Uh, I don't want you to not be able to hang out with everybody else. I forgot that you're scared of these, too. But I think we're doing fairly well now. There's only one more thing that I want to mess with before ending this part. Please. 
<laughs> While I promise I won't be making this place lose its appeal by going all Fulbright on you, I do feel that a good way to assert my dominance over this place is to bring some light to it. And what better way to do that than at the spot that heralds my arrival? I don't want to completely clear this place before I start moving in, because if I do that, I'm starting to realize it's going to take forever. But this main area from when we first entered is safe. At least so far as I know, that paranoia will never really leave me. But I think we can start claiming this whole first cavern as our own. We don't really need this whole complicated staircase that I was trying to build in a panic before. I want this to be as open as possible. But of course, we are going to need an enclosed house here, uh, because this is more of a biome than it is a cavern. We can't look at it as a structure, we have to look at it as it was, as a city. This is random, but I do sort of wonder, <laughs> since this does kind of look like a portal. Eh, no such luck, but it was worth a shot. Oh, I never did try to figure out what these blocks actually are. Hmm. We can't actually seem to mine them at all. Not that I intended to remove this structure anyway, I just wanted to see what they were. But I suppose we should start brushing the skulk off, restore it to its former glory as best we can. Yes, I think we're going to build our first home down here, right here in this very spot, while preserving as much as we can of the structures that are currently here as we expand. Well, maybe even try to develop an eye for how to restore some of these structures. But I think that'll be next episode's project. In the meantime, we did make a discovery that warrants showing to our family. Ah, uh, look at him squirm. So beautiful. There's just no safe haven for the piglins here. Except in anger, I guess. Uh, the biggest danger they pose is actually collateral damage! No, you don't. No, you do not. Die, please. Man, the smite doesn't really seem to be doing anything. But we shall be taking our leave. Come, patience. All right, all of you. <laughs> oh, you're still here. I'm so glad you're persistent across sessions. All right, Liberty, Percy. Where's Percy? And Justice, I have something for you. Found another gift while I was away. Yeah, you break it down. And it seems like they like it too. <laughs> uh, well, that seems like a good note to end it on. A literal dance party. Probably the most light moment we've had in this part. Amongst all the slaughter and darkness. But they seem to be having fun, and in the end, I think that's all I've really come to care about. You guys have said that, uh, given the things some people do in the name of pragmatism, I'm not actually all that evil. And honestly, anytime I hang out with the pets, all I can think is that maybe my villain arc was really a hero arc all along. Yeah, but best not to think too much about it. I have plenty more villainy planned. But that'll have to be in later parts. Until then, if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this mod out for yourself, that link will also be in the description. If you want to donate to my Patreon, that's in the description. And, as always, I will see you in the next one. Oh, Percy and Herobrine are a dance duo!